Well, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, it's a real pleasure to be able to talk to you for a few minutes about behavioral intervention. So um, just a blast from the past, you know, there was a syphilis elimination plan in this country back in 1998. And what I think is most important for this meeting is that the, um, in that plan to eliminate syphilis, the CDC said this, that our primary prevention activities such as interventions to reduce risky sexual activity or increase condom use play a critical role in syphilis elim elimination as these activities were being scaled up for HIV prevention at that time. So how I wanted to sort of frame this talk for you was uh, to specifically answer the questions that you posed to me. So your first question had to do with over the past decade for whom and under what conditions or in what settings have we seen efficacious interventions to reduce the risk for um, STI and HIV in the groups with the highest burden. So the answer to that is that there are actually multiple interventions for STI that have been demonstrated efficacious in priority populations at multiple levels. And there are like dozens of meta-analyses of these dozens of interventions. Uh, interventions that have targeted African-American heterosexual men in the United States have demonstrated efficacy in multiple clinical trials. Uh, interventions targeting Latinos uh, in the United States have demonstrated efficacy for reducing risk behavior. And these are, when, when available, these slides all show reductions in STIs because STIs were the proxy for HIV prevention in, in the best of these behavioral interventions. So when you start thinking about STI prevention, there is a wealth of, of, um, of data out there for STI prevention. Interventions targeting people living with HIV uh, for reducing uh, co-occurring sexually transmitted infections as well as forward transmission of HIV have demonstrated efficacy. A lot of these interventions are one-shot interventions. So when, a lot of times um, a, uh, a belief around behavioral interventions is that they are long and intensive and require multiple exposures, and, and that isn't true. So this is a meta-analysis of 29 single session interventions that were tested in randomized clinical trials where STIs were the, um, the endpoint, and there's generally very good efficacy for reducing STIs from a single shot, one-time intervention when delivered in the right context with the right people. Uh, Meta-analysts have uh, often liked to meta-analyze meta-analyses. And so this is actually a meta-analysis of meta-analyses, uh, uh, meta uh, pitting the behavioral interventions with STI outcomes next to um, a couple of, uh, of uh, HIV prevention biomedically only, I guess you could say, delivered interventions. And the effect size is actually fair pretty well. So these interventions are no mystery to anybody. They're not hidden anywhere. Uh, there is a whole infrastructure at uh, the CDC that was developed to disseminate these interventions for HIV prevention. It exists. Um, I'd like to highlight like one of my favorites. This is Lisa Eaton, um, who had developed an intervention uh, specifically targeting African American men in Atlanta to reduce their risk for HIV with an STI outcome. This is a single session intervention. It could be delivered in 40 minutes. Uh, it was really designed to be a post-test counseling intervention for men who test HIV negative, uh, something that the CDC has, has um, uh, subsequently abandoned. Uh, and so uh, if the idea were to do uh, counseling after testing like used to be required, uh, this was a very novel intervention. It includes a uh, graphic novel to sort of set a tone for, for the potential, per, for, the, for the participant. Um, it, be, it was designed to create a teachable moment for this very brief intervention delivery. It includes an activity for uh, men to then identify their own personal risk using a, uh, an innovative uh, socio self self-constructed sociometric thing with their, with their counselor. And the intervention demonstrated positive STI outcomes in the short term. This is an intervention that is just one of the many that are available at the CDC is their evidence-based behavioral interventions for HIV prevention that has an STI outcome. So clinical trials and implementation studies and cost-effectiveness research support the effectiveness of behavioral interventions for STI prevention. The CDC has prioritized these interventions uh, on the basis of, of their prevention benefit index, which includes a cost component. So it's a cost-effectiveness index. So the answer to your question is interventions delivered in even single sessions of counseling, typically in 40 to 60 minutes, in community and agency service delivery settings, jail, schools, 
uh, STI clinics demonstrate increased condom use, reductions in condomless sex, and reduced STIs in very diverse populations. Then you ask me, what are the key elements in effective interventions? And those are the mediator questions, and there are a lot of different mediators, and it really depends on the intervention and its target. Uh, these mediators are generally well summarized in a model that Jeff Fisher put together called the Information Motivation Behavioral Skills Model. It's just one of many models, but what is useful about it is it condenses down a lot of other mediators into just a few. And these interventions that include these kind of mediators are always delivered with uh, the mindset of sociocultural relevance and structural interpersonal and intrapersonal components and barriers, uh, an eye towards relapse prevention, and a trying to address um, substance use and mental health needs. The active ingredient in the interventions that do reduce risk for STI specifically, though, generally will show that the mediators with the most, um, that account for most of the effect are behavioral skills training. What kind of outcomes should we expect from briefer versus more intensive interventions? So interventions can be put along that continuum of um, least uh, least intensive to most intensive, and the more intensive ones are generally considered um, less brief. The least brief being information, educational kind of brochures, and the most intensive uh, being the multi-session group interventions. Uh, if you think about the briefer interventions being interactive texting and text messaging and, infor and informational brochures, uh, they are generally very good at um, increasing screening and testing outcomes and very bad at reducing sexual risk and increasing condom use. So the target of the outcome is more important than um, maybe anything that we, we consider. What do we really expect? From single session counseling interventions, where they be delivered individually or in groups, I already showed you that these interventions have been demonstrated efficacious. Meta-analyses don't seem to find a difference between small group single shot interventions and single counseling, center, uh, single counseling session interventions. So that um, isn't really an issue. Uh, the more intensive and expensive multi-session counseling interventions uh, um, have uh, for a long time, because uh, these were really the first ones that, that, we, that we tested, the, for a long time these interventions have been, have been accepted as efficacious. In fact, the NIMH had had a consensus conference years ago um, where the evidence was clear that these interventions reduce risk. Um, we know that behavioral interventions aren't like vaccines and they're not like male circumcision. They uh, do require sustained longer-term support for long-term behavior change. I think that Project Explorer is a great example of this. Project Explorer demonstrated very clear reductions in HIV transmission over the course of six months to a year, but I think it's unreasonable to expect even an intensive behavioral intervention to, um, to, to last forever. That's where social network interventions can be helpful because social network interventions generally target norm changes and, and of social environmental changes that can support long-term behavior change. And the interventions that have tested social network interventions have generally also demonstrated um, great, great, uh, great evidence for effi uh, efficacy. So passive information, they answer your question, uh, passive information and messaging can, in, can impact discrete individual behavior, such as screening and, and testing uptake, um, appointment keeping. Brief counseling uh, th that's done either individually or in groups has been demonstrated efficacious for um, more socially complex behaviors that are related to STI transmission. And network interventions can be thought of as uh, not only behavior changing, but behavior change support. So one can think about interventions then along these dimensions, right? So you can have um, messages that are delivered in risk-associated venues uh, to increase testing and uptake of screening. You can think about mental um, uh, texting and, in and interactive text messaging being delivered in service delivery settings, such as mental health and substance use and, and, and clinics. Uh, you can think about behavioral skills training inter interventions, brief one-time behavioral skills training interventions as being deliverable within the context of HIV testing and in substance abuse treatment centers and in jails and clinics. And the more intensive interventions that would be difficult to invest in widely may be, may be a very good option for people that have repeat STIs. You asked me what new and innovative strategies are needed to intervene with African American and Latino young men who have sex with men and transgender individuals who have particularly high burden. I don't think that we can wait 
uh, to end institutionalized racism. I think we'd all agree that we need better ocean liners, but in the meantime, we're talking about building and getting people into lifeboats, just to carry on the metaphor. So I think that we can home test. Lots of people have demonstrated this. Home testing can be um, embedded within a broader range of services and behavioral interventions. And we can sort of revolutionize how STI detection and treatment and prevention are delivered. Researchers are doing this. So actually, um, Lisa Eaton and Brian Mostansky and Kristen Grove have, and, and many others have done in several large studies. I think Hunter College now has a study with 9,000 men across the country. We're, we're very easily able to deliver home testing kits for urine and rectal swab and pharyngeal swab collection. Uh, and with very, with very high rates of acceptability and, and STI rates that actually mirror what people are seeing in other community-based um, uh, uh, epidemiological studies. Uh, with web-based testing, you can also have e-prescription. So if we can test online, we can also treat online. Uh, it's been demonstrated that delivery of e-prescriptions in association with home testing has very high acceptability and is seen as feasible and cost-effective. And I think that if we can home test and we can home treat, we can also home counsel. So the effective behavioral interventions that the CDC has readily available can be digitized. I think you'll hear more about that in a few moments from Jose. I must say, the slide was in there before I knew you'd be here, so don't think this is just for points, Jose. Um, but Jose Bauermeister will talk to you today about actually um, digitizing interventions. Interventions like Think Twice can be easily digitized. Um, that's really demonstrated by Brian Mostansky's intervention, Keep It Up, which is delivered completely online to men anywhere. There are a lot of real benefits to doing this kind of online delivery of interventions. Uh, it, re it removes the local area, uh, the health department, for example, of having a highly skilled interventionist in-house. In they can be anywhere. Keep It Up is one of the interventions that the CDC has in its effective evidence-based interventions for HIV prevention that's readily available for STI use. So in summary, I would say that the um, NIH, several institutes at the NIH have invested heavily in developing and rigorously testing behavioral interventions for HIV prevention that have STI outcomes, and so they are, of course, then STI interventions. The CDC established an entire infrastructure to evaluate evidence-based interventions put them into packages, train frontline providers. That scale-up effort was in full swing, and it slowed around, I think, 2015, and today it's all but stopped. Uh, and I think that there are no longer linking, our no longer linking counseling with testing has cost us enormous opportunities for STI prevention with men who test, and men and women who test HIV negative. And that is my talk.